This is good old boy Mike from Sips, Suds, and Smokes, and you're listening to From Paper to People. Welcome to another episode of From Paper to People, the family cookbook. My name is Carolyn Nee Lachlan, and I am your hostess with the mostest. Welcome to the genealogy podcast with a census of humor. And it's a little hard to have a sense of humor right now, truly, because we are all very worried. And that's why I decided we need an episode called Keep It Sweet. And that's just what we're going to do. We're going to dig into generations old candy recipes of my grandmother's. My grandmother used to let my mother have friends over after school. And what they would do is so cute. It's like the most incredibly sort of Midwestern army brat white girl thing to do. She would have friends over. And in one case, in one case, they made these little Coke aprons. They're so fantastic. I have them and they are made out of calico and they're like little aprons, you know, like an apron that you would wear that goes around your neck and goes down your front and has ties and has a little pocket on it. It's exactly like that, only it's the right size for a Coke bottle to keep the sweat on the Coke bottle from getting your hand wet and the little pocket is for a straw. They would hand make these and then use them to drink their little bottles of Coke. And another thing that they would do is they would have their little bottles of Coke because, I don't know, feed people full of sugar. I guess it's good for them, right? Mm, Not so sure about that. But my grandmother would have them in the kitchen and they would make and eat fudge. They would make and eat other candies as well. And homemade candy was a big deal in my grandmother's family. As I've said, she came from Omaha. She was born in 1905 in Omaha, and her mother made candy, and her stepmother made candy, and it's just kind of a part of this sort of German-English heritage that I have. So I've got this uh, wonderful book in front of me, and I'm going to pull out a couple of recipe cards, and I'm going to read you what we've got. But first, this service message. COVID-19, better known as coronavirus, has spread throughout the world. Symptoms of this respiratory disease may include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. These symptoms may show up 2 to 14 days after exposure. If you are experiencing these symptoms and have come into contact or are in an area with an ongoing outbreak, please call a hotline and or consult with a physician. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces. For more information, please visit cdc.gov forward slash COVID-19. Thank you. That service announcement was courtesy of Blueberry, the company that hosts my podcast, and the information was courtesy of the CDC. That's the Centers for Disease Control here in the United States. I know that other countries have different authorities, but you can always use cdc.gov to find out information about what's happening here in the United States. So I don't mean to leave anybody out, just wanted to qualify that. And now let's go to the land of fudge. Peanut butter fudge is my favorite kind of fudge. And this recipe is a recipe of my grandmother's. And judging from the vinegar in it, which I have never seen in any modern recipe, this has got to be a fairly old one. It's written in my grandmother's handwriting. And it also specifies cane sugar instead of white sugar. So this language and the ingredients tell me that that's probably a fairly old recipe, maybe even one that she used when she was a young woman herself. My dad loved peanut butter fudge so much and loves cashews so much that one time for his birthday, I made him cashew butter fudge. He loved it too. He was thrilled. So here we go. Peanut butter fudge. 
two cups of cane sugar or white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, one cup of water, one teaspoon of vinegar, one tablespoon of butter, and a pinch of salt. The peanut butter is separate, okay? All right, so here we go. My grandmother's manner in writing these things is always confusing to me. Boil to 236 degrees, stirring to prevent sticking. Remove from fire and beat in one cup of chunky peanut butter. Beat till starts to set, press into pan. And it works. I assure you, it works. Now, this is the fudge recipe that my mother used to make when she was a girl. And it's just wonderful. It's typed up, and I think my mother typed it up in her high school typing class. Because I don't know about you guys, but we had typing class even when I went to school. And that's what this is. So four cups of granulated sugar a quarter pound of butter or oleo, which is oleo margarine, one cup of pet milk, which is a canned evaporated milk product, one teaspoon of vanilla, one pint of marshmallow cream, two packages of chocolate bits, which would be chips of some kind now, and two cups of nuts. More is better, but at least this much chop fairly fine. Boil to a soft ball stage the sugar, butter, and milk. Remove from the stove, add two packages of chocolate bits, add vanilla and marshmallow cream, blend until the chocolate bits are well melted, add nuts, and pour in a buttered pan. A 9 by 13 pan is nice, makes thick pieces. <laughs> That's my mom all over. Work fast after you start blending the bits, cream, and nuts, makes about five pounds. So she and her friends, she made uh, six Coke aprons. So she and her six friends ate five pounds of fudge. Those girls, I can't imagine that they weren't just rolling down the street full of fudge. Stunning. Here's another one. This is a recipe from a Mrs. Tully. And it's an old card. It's written in my grandmother's hand in a younger version of my grandmother's hand. And it is battered and torn and spotted. So Mrs. Tully's cream candy. Three cups of sugar, one cup of caro syrup, one and a quarter cup of cream, one cup of nuts. Cook to 234 degrees. Again, use your candy thermometer. Beat until stiff, then push down on plate. Okay, I have no idea what you do after that. I suppose you cut it into pieces. But again, these things, they're not really telling us a whole lot. Here's an after-dinner mince recipe. And this is uh, <laughs> a very bad typing job from my mom. So I get the feeling that this was another one of her high school typing attempts. After-dinner mince. Put two cups of sugar, two-thirds of a cup of boiling water, one quarter teaspoon cream of tartar, one teaspoon vinegar in saucepan overheat, Stir until sugar is dissolved, then boil without stirring to 265 degrees. Pour onto slightly greased platter and leave until cool enough to handle. Pull candy with fingers, adding a few drops of oil of peppermint. When too stiff to pull, stretch into a rope one half inch in diameter and cut with scissors in small pieces. Put it once into a bowl of powdered sugar and leave until sugary. Can you do that with your kids? That's what I'm thinking of with all of this. I know I'm saying, hey, fill your kids full of sugar and then let them run around crashing into furniture inside your house. Not necessarily the best idea. I know that. I understand that. I don't have children, so I don't have to deal with what happens when you fill your children full of sugar. But I would think that this is actually kind of a fun thing to do. Not just cookies, not just cake, not just cookies or cake from a mix, but to make candies. It's really reaching back a couple of generations. Here's another one. Pecan pralines. One cup sugar, white. Two cups of light brown sugar. A quarter cup of white caro syrup. One eighth of a teaspoon of salt. One and a quarter cups of milk one teaspoon vanilla, and a cup of pecans. Combine all but vanilla and pecans. Cook to soft ball 
236 degrees. Remove from fire and cool to lukewarm. Add pecans and vanilla and beat with wooden spoon until it loses its gloss. Drop by tablespoons on waxed paper and spread to four inches diameter. Wrap in cellophane. If anybody is from Louisiana, specifically the area of New Orleans, you can tell me whether or not that's a faithful recipe. I will believe you either way. I'm going to give you one more candy recipe for the kids and then a wedding punch for the adults. Once those kids have been burnt out by sugar and gone to sleep. The final one is divinity. And this is like age old American culture food. Divinity, I've heard about for years and years. I think I've probably tried it once or twice. It's an odd sort of fluffy candy, but that's all I can really remember. It's a kind of a creamy, fluffy candy. Anyway, it's two cups of white sugar, a half a cup of corn syrup, a half a cup of water, two egg whites, a tablespoon of vanilla, a half a cup of nuts, and salt. Cook the sugar, syrup, and water to 265 degrees. Pour over egg whites, add salt, vanilla, nuts, and beat till creamy. On the back it says to make sea foam, which is a different kind of candy, I guess, substitute brown sugar for the white sugar and use a quarter cup of syrup instead of the half cup of syrup for divinity. Okay. So we've got two last candies, Divinity and Seafoam. Now, for those households that indulge in alcohol, I have something for you. It is wedding punch, and I think they must want you to serve it to everybody before they write the checks to put in the purse. (laughs) I'm not sure. For every 20 people to be served, so this is 20 people's worth of wedding punch. If you make it and you put it in the refrigerator, seal it tightly so that the alcohol doesn't evaporate and make sure you mark it with like three X's and a skull and crossbones like they do in the cartoons so that the kids won't go near it. Slice a half a pineapple. Place in a bowl with a cup of sugar syrup, and I don't know if that's a preordained recipe for sugar syrup or if you can use caro I have no idea a cup of lemon juice two cups of pineapple juice one and one half fifths of rum whoa that's a lot of rum chill at least two hours pour over a block of ice add two quarts of sparkling water and one pint of sliced strawberries oh my that's fancy well that may not be something that we can make while we're all stuck at home but It's something to plan for, for the future. Anyway, I wanted to give you some recipes that would make you laugh because they're fun. And I don't know, they're not necessarily practical, at least some of them, but some of them probably are. And if your kids are going to be going out of their minds anyway, and you have to homeschool them, you know, home ec used to be a class. It actually used to be required for graduation at my school. So give it a try. Why not? Otherwise, keep it sweet. Take care of yourself. And above all, wash your hands. (laughs) 